Thank you, Cindy. You know, Irish fans are waking up this morning all around Michiana and the rest of the country, hoping yesterday was maybe just a bad dream after Clemson drubbed Notre Dame in the Cotton Bowl. So how did it all go wrong? We head back to Alex Wilcox in Arlington for some answers. Alex Wilcox here alongside Irish Illustrated analyst Tim Priester. Tim, we just watched Notre Dame get spanked by Clemson 30-3 to in the Cotton Bowl. For lack of a better words, what happened? Yeah, well, Clemson was just too physical for Notre Dame. And, you know, I mean, I think there's a difference between this and 2012 with Alabama, at least the first quarter or so. But <laughs> then, you know, once things spiraled, it just got out of control. Two, you know, a couple of really bad breaks, obviously. Notre Dame can't function without Julian Love. He's just too good. He's an All-American cornerback, and they lost him early. And then they picked on Dante Vaughn. There was a reason why Dante Vaughn lost his spot in the rotation in midseason. He got it back when a freshman Tariq Bracey struggled against USC. But they picked on him. Justin Ross is a great freshman receiver, averaging 20 yards a reception. They beat him deep for 52 and, and 42 yards. I thought Notre Dame did a really nice job stopping the run. I, mm -hmm. That was one of the concerns that I had for them, that Travis Etienne and their other running backs you know, we're averaging 260 yards rushing a game and almost seven yards per carry. They did a good job of stopping them. But over the course of time, you knew ETN would break one off, and he did at the end. But, you know, there's just the, it, it was just too much talent. Big picture, this is another blowout loss in a big game on a national stage. How much work does Notre Dame have to do before they can get themselves into that upper tier of college football powerhouses? Well, I think they were in the upper tier here, at least the, the, the top four, and I think there's a really good chance that a lot of the 50-50 guys as, that are considering leaving are going to come back. And I think if Julian Love decides to come back, I think they're going to maybe perhaps get 100% of those correct. So you're going to jump right back on the horse. You lose Coney, you lose Tranquil, you lose Tillery which is the center of your defense, and that's very difficult to, to uh, reconstruct. But most of the other components come back, including your quarterback, uh, Dexter Williams. Of course, you lose him and a, and a few other guys. So they're in position to, to do that again. And as far as being able to keep, compete with Clemson, the third year of the Matt Bayless program, the strength and conditioning like program, I mean, that's all you can do. Last year when Notre Dame beat LSU in the Citrus Bowl, you got the sense that that really springboarded the program and led to part of the success that Notre Dame had mm -hmm. this year. Do you worry that a loss like this, a demoralizing loss like this, could have a negative effect on the team next year? It could, but that's not my reaction. I think, if anything, this can be motivating. I, you know, they came a long way this year. They went 12-0. and 0. You don't throw away everything you accomplished during the regular season because of a, a very poor performance. And we all, we all understand that there is a huge step up uh, in order to, to Notre Dame to get to the national championship game. But I think that can be pretty motivating. I, I think they're very well aware of the progress that they made. The offense is definitely headed in the right direction. We talked about some of those key guys on defense that need to be replaced. But I think it can, just like the win last year under the circumstances was a springboard, I think this can be as well. Uh, Tim Priester, one of the best in the area. And you can subscribe to Irish Illustrated, the number one source for Notre Dame sports online. Just head to irishillustrated.com and click on join to find the best plan for you.